friends, Heidi here from Rain Country. God is good all the time. And I've been starting to put the two pumpkins like this that I got off my vines to use. Now yesterday I, I took the smaller one and cut it in half and I baked it and I ate half of it for lunch. Now the other half I'm going to use to turn into some uh, pumpkin spice uh, popsicles or creamsicles for Patrick. And so here's the other one that I got. Now I got a picture of the two of them side by side so you can see them. Now we haven't, I still haven't uh, established ex for sure what these are. I had several people saying they think it's a blue Hubbard. Either way I'm positive it's a pumpkin of some sort because it's shaped like a pumpkin, it looks like a pumpkin, it tastes like a pumpkin, and it smells like a pumpkin. So anyway, I just wanted to show you some of the uses for your pumpkins. Now this is going to apply to butternut squash, certain types of acorn squashes, and anything that's going to be um, more of your pumpkin flavor and color. So you don't have to just use pumpkins for making pumpkin pies and stuff like that. You can use other types of squash. So that's what I'm going to be doing today with these. Now I have a recipe that I put out two years ago for a pumpkin dip and typically you use cream cheese in it. Now in that recipe I use goat cheese but you can use you know homemade goat cheese but you can use whatever type of you can go to the store and get cream cheese if you prefer or even try making that vegan cream cheese out of your uh, cashews and pecans and I have a recipe for both of those that I'll be linking for both the pumpkin dip and to the uh, vegan cream cheese and I do have uh, cheese making videos out there too using dairy cheese you know goat cow milk whatever so I'll try to get all remember to get all those linked down below I do have a pumpkin bread recipe from a few years ago but it was still when my lighting was really dark I'm gonna rec actually recommend you to the apple spice Brazil nut bread that I made all you have to do is substitute the applesauce in there for your pureed pumpkin and then you can have a pumpkin bread and you don't have to use the Brazil nut pulp so it's just will give you an idea of how to make a good quick bread using pumpkins or apples or whatever okay so today I decided what I'm going to do just to add a little more bulk to it and I have a lot of apples I'm going to go ahead and throw in one of the apples from my tree I picked a smaller one because I don't want too much in there and so oh and one more thing I wanted to say on that pumpkin dip it's really good with fresh sliced apples you dip those in the in there or even like a ginger cookie or some other type of cookie that you think of in the fall time really really good at that pumpkin dip okay so what I have here is about a cup and a half of the pureed pumpkin after I baked it and then just smashed it up a little bit so it's not really even pureed it's just mashed and so I'm gonna toss that into my blender Okay, now let's try it again. There we go. It's been sitting in that measuring cup for a little bit. And now I'm going to go ahead and peel this, or I'm not actually going to peel it. I'm just going to core it and slice it. This single apple, this is optional. This is just some ideas for you. And then I just broke it up and tossed it in there. Okay, and now for some seasonings. Let's put in just about maybe a quarter teaspoon of cloves. It's easy to get too much cloves, so be careful with those. We'll put in a little bit more in that, maybe closer to a, uh, let's put in a whole teaspoon of ginger. I like lots of ginger and lots of cinnamon, but you might want to start with just a quarter to a half teaspoon of the ginger and whoops. And with the cinnamon, I say, depending on how spicy you like things, start with a teaspoon. I usually go right for a tablespoon of cinnamon because we like lots of cinnamon. And that's also why I choose to use the Ceylon cinnamon so I don't have to worry so much about overdosing my body because cassia cinnamon though it does have its benefits it's easy to get you don't you just don't want to go overboard with cassia it can be a little hard on the system now one uh for a sugar i recommend using maple syrup because this is going to go really nicely with the flavors you got here but another option would be your coconut sugar coconut sugar i find blends really well with these kinds of things anything where i've got cinnamon and stuff like that i find i really like the coconut sugar in that but i decided to go with the maple syrup in this one so i would say start with about a quarter cup of maple syrup and then uh just taste it and see where it goes from there because you know as usual i don't use measurements 
I just pour it in there. It looks like about a quarter cup. And this is real maple syrup. Don't get the fake maple syrup. If you just get something that's just maple syrup, it's usually made from genetically modified corn syrup with maple flavoring added. So that's why it's so cheap. Okay, and then to give it a creaminess, this is totally optional. You can add some whole, some heavy whipping cream or even some half and half. I like the Organic Valley's half and half. I tend to keep it on hand for doing stuff like this quite often. But whipping cream will make it even richer if you decide to go with that. Now we're just going to process it up and then I'll taste it and see what I think. Okay, I've decided it needs just a little bit more spice. So I'm going to throw in a little bit more cinnamon. Another pinch of the cloves and just a little bit more ginger. Mostly the cinnamon and the cloves I think it needs more of. So we'll put in a little bit more of that. So we'll go ahead and toss in a little bit more ginger. And it's going to need more maple syrup, so I'm going to put in about another quarter cup of that. And a little bit more half and half, which is another reason why I needed more maple syrup, because I'm actually increasing the amount I got here. Okay, well that's pretty tasty. Uh, I think it's just right the way it is. So again, when you're doing stuff like this, I never measure things. I just typically throw them together. I have a whole bunch of different recipe ideas for making frozen treats like these. Even though we're into the cold time of the year, Patrick still likes having his frozen treats. And though we'll still splurge and buy ice cream from time to time, I prefer to try to make him healthier treats like this to have on hand so he can have something where he can still feel he's getting a good treat. So I just start filling up the popsicle molds, and I'll link to these below. I find these simple ones made by the Zoku are the best ones I've ever used. They're still plastic, unfortunately. Um, I think they do make some stainless steel ones. I've been kind of eyeballing because, you know me, I'm trying to get away from plastic. But these have been really good. At least I know these ones are BPA and phthalate free. So that's, that's a plus there. And then you just stick your tops in there and I don't mind at all if it gushes out a little bit around the stick because that lets me know it's in there. I actually feel better about it when it gushes out a little bit so I'm kind of wondering if these ones could be a little bit more full. And then if you have any excess just get a little like a, a half pint uh, mason jar or even one of these recycled glass jars. These are pretty heavy duty. These are good for doing stuff like that in. And then I just put it in that, and usually this will be the first thing that gets eaten. And uh, I'll just stick that in the freezer right along with the popsicles, and then that can be something that would be eaten tonight. Now, if you prefer to just avoid the popsicle thing altogether, there's nothing wrong with putting all of your mixture into little glasses like these, or again, like I said, the recycled glass. I'll go ahead and link to some of these below. I actually got these at our local um, nursery. They carry these recycled glass ones, and I've looked on Amazon to find some just like these, and I couldn't find them exactly with the same print, but the same shape. It's got to be made by the same company. They have all different designs. So anyway, these work really good. The only problem with putting several of them in glass like this is best if you eat it up right away because um, unless you're going to put a lid on it, like this would be a good one to put a lid on it. Otherwise, it can get kind of a kind of a stale flavor to it if it sits in the freezer too long open. Typically, I'll just set this in the freezer. Uh, a lot of times I'll have enough to fill up this all the way. It just depends on how much I make at a time uh, or one of these. It holds almost the same amount. And then we just, uh, then Patrick will just eat it with a spoon that night while it's still kind of soft. Uh, if you let it freeze all the way, it's definitely harder to eat with a spoon, but you just can let it thaw for a little bit. So just some things to consider. You don't have to buy popsicle molds if you'd rather not. I just know Patrick, he does like eating the popsicles, but he also does like these as long as it's not hard. <laughs> So there's yet another idea for a frozen treat, even for the winter time. And don't forget to check out the other videos and other things that you can do with your pumpkin, such as the bread and the dip and so on. All right, well, I hope you enjoyed this video and that you learned something new and gave you another idea for your pumpkin and other squash. Thanks for watching. Take care and God bless. Mm -hmm.